better get me back, as it'll be dark soon, and they mostly come at night. Mostly. Welcome to Mostly Horror. Mostly. I'm Steve. And I'm Sean. An extra, extra, read all about it. This is an Boom. extra episode. Part two, baby. Part two. The sequel. With Amelie Hoferle and Gavin Electric Warren. Electric Boogaloo. From Night Swim. Um, very excited to have two episodes this week. If you listened to our episode before this, you know that we did not do some things you already know. So let's jump into... Mm-hmm. Some things you probably already know. I'm sure you already knew that. You only tell me stuff I already know. You already know what I'm going to tell you. First stuff on happened. the list. What? I was, I was just saying stuff has happened. And we're stuff has talk. happened. <laughs> um, first on the list. Yeah. In our in our first episode of this year, Mostly Horror Spookum Scarum, uh, second annual Spookum Scarum Awards with our friend Mike Scollins, we talked about Scream a smidge. Yeah. And uh, since then, Christopher Landon has officially exited the production. Yes. Um, yep. I felt like that was probably going to happen. Yeah, I think it was a that given. That's, yeah, that's something that you can't, you know, it's just been a shit show. Like, n- not to his, not any fault of his, but like since yeah. he joined, like everything was seven, like he joined and then the Melissa stuff and the Jenna stuff. and Yeah. Um, I feel like there's not a place that you want to be in. Um, so I don't blame him. Um, he, he wrote a statement on Twitter. I don't have it yeah. readily available, it's, but this is what it says. I'll, I'll read it for everybody just in case you missed mm-hmm. it. It says this was posted on the 23rd. So Christmas Eve Eve. It says, I guess now is as good a time as any to announce that I formally have exited Scream seven weeks ago. This will disappoint some and delight others. It was a dream job that turned into a nightmare, and my heart did break for everyone involved. Everyone. But it's time to move on. I have nothing more to add to the conversation other than I hope Wes's legacy thrives and lifts above the the din. Maybe he meant dim. Din. Din. I don't know. Give me a... What, is, what does he mean there? I don't know what din means. <laughs> uh, din is kind of like... Din is like... Uh... It's like a prolonged like noise, like basically just like lifts above all the bullshit that's surrounding this is kind gotcha. of what he's trying to say. Yeah. Okay. I hope that Wes's legacy thrives and lifts above the din of a divided world. What he and Kevin created is something amazing. And I was honored to have even the briefest moment basking in their glow. Um, so that was, that was his statement. And he had made the statement, you know, before when things were really unwinding, when he was saying, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was like, this sucks. Everything sucks. Everybody yeah, should just shut up. Shouting. Yeah, yeah like please that. stop shouting. Something like that, uh, which yeah. a lot of people took in a very terrible way that I don't un- initially understand. Um, but yeah, yeah, what do you think? What are your immediate thoughts about this? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was going to happen uh, anyways. Yeah. Um, it feels like radio silence should just jump back into it. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't I don't know. I like. Just just leave it maybe you know Mm -hmm. as excited as i would be for a new screen movie at this point like just let it maybe just let it sit for like a couple years yeah um at this point um and yeah i mean you know i I don't think chris chris landon responded like perfectly to the melissa stuff Um, how do you how i don't know yeah how i don't know how you respond um but yeah i got like i don't i don't think it was a perfect response i don't think that I don't know what a perfect response would have been. Um, so, you know, definitely feel for him getting thrown into um, those decisions that Spyglass made um, after, you know, being taking over the helm of this, this wonderful horror franchise that we all love. Um, but he's remaking arachnophobia. So hopefully he just continues yeah. to make dope stuff because his movies yeah. are fun. So absolutely. Um, yeah. It's, it, going through just like his Twitter and some of the things that I've seen on there and some of the responses to him, I understand that people yeah. feel very passionately about the situation. That's totally fair. I don't personally understand really aiming this so much at him. I know that people, we, we live in a time where there's terrible things happening right now. Uh, obviously, genocide is fucking awful. Uh, what what Israel is doing is is not 
great. What terrorist organizations do is not great uh, or are actively awful both on, on both parts. It's worse than not great. These are terrible times. Um, and people that use these things as an excuse to be anti-Semitic are terrible. But I think that and, and people that just, you know, have large platforms and don't say anything like that's not the best move either. But also the way that people just expected him to rush out these statements defending her, like there are so many things that probably go into legality stuff regarding mm-hmm. a movie and decisions that are made like like and it, it takes time to process and think and figure out what the fuck is going on. And I just think that people rushing to that aren't. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's... everyone, everyone on the, on the internet is always going to come for people, like come for people's throats as soon as possible. Yeah. And no one ever, you know, there's never patience. There's never grace. There's never anything. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I'm the same way. Like I, I get it. It's the internet. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, again, he had a dream job was thrown into a, a shitty situation. Um, you know, cards he was not even dealt, uh, and decisions that the studio made for him. And, yeah. um, hopefully he, you know, hopefully his relationship with Melissa is still good. Hopefully he, yeah. you know, like hopefully the people that matter, not the people online, but like the people that matter yeah. still, um, you know, have faith yeah. in him and, and it's, he'll still get put in good situations. Absolutely. O- overall, I want to see both him and Melissa, not sink because of this shit situation. Like I, yeah. I think that we should continue to be like, what the fuck are studios doing? You yeah. know, the frustration should be aimed there. And I really hope that these two creative people get to continue on with their careers. That's what, yeah. that's what I want to see. And as for scream. Yeah. I mean, your trilogy's already fucked. There's no sense in rushing into anything else. No, let it sit a couple years. No, give it, give it 10, give it 10, come back. You know, like I, we don't yeah. need another scream right now. I think yeah. that the the taste will be too sour and bitter, no matter what you do. Even if you somehow nail it plot wise, I can't imagine it not coming off the wrong way in at least some way, moving drastically forward. Love the radio silence, guys, but I'm just like, fuck scream. Let's see their universal movie. Let's see yeah. whatever Melissa is going to jump into next. Let's see Chris Landon's, you know, arachnophobia movie and leave scream behind for now yeah i do think it will still come out in 2024 so i know it's it's gonna when we do like you know yeah it's it's, i just hate that (laughs) yeah yeah i know know. all right Uh, on to the next um, one on to the next one so a cool thing that uh bloody disgusting is doing Mm -hmm. um that i think you know i just thought it would be cool to tell everyone um is Scotchworthy Productions, who did Bloody Bites, I don't know what that is, and The Line, which is, I'm sure, I believe another production company who did Brooklyn 45 and The Stylist, are teaming up with Bloody Disgusting for Better Luck Than Chuck, which is the first ever horror trivia game show, Um, and it has a Universal Halloween Horror Nights Grand Prize. I think it's just going to be a show that they're putting on. I don't know what channels or what it's going to be. Um, but it's it's a game show that they're making that's horror trivia. How um, do we become contestants? What do we got to do? Who? What, what email do. do we have to send? Okay, here's go. what you do. Let me get my pen you and paper. Go to betterluckthanchuck.com. Um, and I think you only have actually there's there's sweepstakes. Uh. Well, if you're listening to this, the sweepstakes are over, so I'm sorry. We're recording this the day uh, before New Year's Eve, and so you can still enter Better Luck Than Chuck sweepstakes. Um, On January 1st or after, you can visit Better Luck Than Chuck, and they're accepting contestant submissions. Oh, Um, let's fucking go. Yeah. So I thought that's cool. Shout out to Bloody Disgusting and uh, Scotchworthy Productions in the line for doing that. Um, cause that's just dope. So, oh man, I yeah. legitimately am going to see if I can get on this show. hundred <laughs> yeah, percent. Yeah. Oh my God. Watch it happen. We're manifesting guys. Yep. We're manifesting. Let's make it happen. Okay. That's really cool. I did not hear about that at all. Um, yeah. let's do it. They should do teams. We should go. <laughs> they should do teams. Go as mostly horror. 
What so, uh, is there anything else that um, yeah, that we probably well, already it's, know? So, so I'm curious if you have heard, and I've been trying to like, I've seen it on multiple multiple sites now, um, but I it, none of the articles are giving me a ton of information. But have you heard that James Wan is looking to make a Call of Cthulhu movie? I did see that. Um, I think it was he. Yeah. What what he's, was what was happening there? I, basically, I, he said he was going to direct the Call of Cthulhu. Like that. Was... Yeah. It's it's basically that it's happening, but it didn't give me a ton of details on like studio or anything like that. It just kind of goes on to talk about the fact well, it's going to be that... Atomic Monster. <laughs> which oh, is studio. okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, that makes sense. I didn't know. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Um, but. But basically just talks about how it's been a dream project of his for forever and and all this stuff. And I don't know, man, that frustrates like that frustrates me for some reason, I think, because Del Toro has wanted to do it since Mm. fucking Nam, you know, and uh, and we we're not getting a Del Toro call of Cthulhu. And, you know, I've we've talked about James Wan ad nauseum on here. Uh, I love his earth his earlier work. I don't love a lot of what he's done, you know, in the past, like few years. Uh, yeah. and I don't know, I don't know that I trust him with call of, call of Cthulhu. I guess I'm curious enough to see what he's going to do, but that movie, like that storyline hasn't been tackled in this huge way, really. And I, well, and it's also a short, right? Like it's not, it's not well, like yeah, a but long you, story. Like it's well, going to be, a, it's going to be an adaptation. That's, fleshed out Uh, yes but there's so much lore in that universe um yeah that it won't be hard at all to expand that um and it's a dense sort of story in itself anyway short even as a short story it's just dense with lore uh so that i'm not worried about but i just don't i just don't see james wan doing it like i don't know that to me that's like the strangest combination and is also a bummer because I just want fucking Del Toro to do it. Yeah, I think the reality of the Del Toro thing is that he's going to make whatever he wants to make at this point. I think he's maybe over that. Like, there's Del Toro is just going to make whatever art he wants to make now. Um, so I think even if he did, wanted to do a Cthulhu thing, he probably would. Um, do it, Del Toro. Or maybe he's just over it. We know like... that you're a regular listener of the show. We support <laughs> yeah, you. Can you imagine? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I so... have to bring that up. Uh, yeah um yeah uh, aligned with you in not generally loving james wan's stuff recently um i'm also not just a lover of his stuff historically um Mm -hmm. but that's that's fine uh yeah i mean you know it's one of those things where it's like it's a really big name and uh, you know something that will be worth seeing regardless to just see the take. But I just hope it doesn't look like James Wan stuff, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, a hundred percent, especially coming off of like the huge blockbusters that he's been doing with like Aquaman. Like, I just don't want it to that's even have a whiff of that. That's really my main thing is I'm like, when you think of, I mean, I just can't, I can't imagine another person. Obviously there's, I would love to see Del Toro tackle anything. But I feel like I'm not just speaking through my like personal Del Toro bias when I say that objectively for for a Lovecraft thing, especially like like this story specifically, yeah, Del Toro is just the best option, I, like objectively the best option. So I just don't see how. And I know it's not like one person. I mean, like it's anyone can do a an HP Lovecraft thing, but I don't think that anyone has like a copyright to call it Cthulhu or or no. Lovecraft in general. Yeah, I don't so. Think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's just free use. So it's not like this stops that from happening, but I don't know. I just don't want anyone else to get to it before Del Toro. And specifically, probably not James Wan. <laughs> yeah, based on the and thing the that I read, it said that yeah. he's been working on this like for years, James Wan has. Um, it would so be so think... cool if he proved me wrong and it was just killer. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> <sighs> All Anything right. else that you had? I have one one other small thing that I think is really cool. No, that was the main thing that caught my attention. That's that's it. What else we got? All right. Uh, the last thing that I have the the game Doom, which I know I played growing up. 
I believe you probably played too. N64. I actually never played a Doom game. Isn't that funny? Uh, I've right, seen a Doom, lot of gameplay. Doom oh. Friend 64 absolutely rules, but um, it's a game that a lot of people mod. Yeah. And uh, Mike Wilson for Bloody Disgusting wrote an article about a video or about a, a mod that he found or that was flagged to him called Friday the 13th Jason's Doom. And basically someone modded Doom to be like the Doom guy, the person that you play hunting down Jason and defeating. Nice. Him. Um, okay. It's actually the it's the NES version, um, but it's like Crystal Lake in the cabins and, and all that sort of stuff. So it's really fun. If you're at all interested, look up uh, Friday the 13th Jason's Doom Total Conversion, I think is what the video is called um on youtube that like shows the gameplay um but just fun goofy shit that i definitely wanted to bring up because it's okay it's super cool i will definitely be looking into it and it did remind me of one more thing that i'm going to bring up that i'm curious if you hit me hit me another game while you're doing that i'm going to grab one thing okay so so make i think it's this year it's either like this year or next year mickey mouse is going to 2024 2024 Mickey Mouse is going to become free use. Not every version of him, which is really interesting. Like mm-hmm. Disney has Steamboat been Willy. Yeah, the specifically the Steamboat Willie era design of Mickey Mouse is going to become public domain. Um this is after multiple times that Disney and other corporations have literally mm-hmm. changed the laws to protect their their IP and make it so that things take, I think it's like 95 years or something now before something mm-hmm. becomes public domain after being copywritten. Uh, but because of this, there is a game that is going to be coming out. I don't know if you've heard about it called Mouse. It is a first person shooter that is that is that looks just like an old 20s like mickey mouse cartoon it's like mobsters and it looks so fucking sick it's made by i I think i'm pronouncing this correctly fumi games um and yeah they have like a trailer out and it looks cool like i i am ex super excited for it oh my god right this is this is insane yeah. i will say it's really funny because so we're recording this on december 30th for, ever, for mm-hmm. everyone listening and i'm curious if by the first they will have <laughs> changed some sort of copyright law to make it so right. this uh, doesn't can't... happen yeah Not that bad. is crazy the gameplay looks absolutely insane yeah it's like cuphead uh first person yeah. shooter wow yep I love it that. looks cool man i'm all about it i'm i'm so stoked for it yeah um one last thing before we get to our conversation just because we were talking about uh del toro and this will only mm-hmm. work for our people that are um watching this on youtube um sorry for our listeners but i recently got the criterion uh version of pinocchio i saw that post uh, not from you but i saw the physical i saw that box it looks amazing god it looks it so good so Whoa! Cool. <laughs> nice it is it is absolutely it's yeah it's just beautiful. The packaging Holy criterion shit. absolutely nailed this shit. Um, a little I, bit I of an art book re- in there. Oh yeah, huge art book. Nice. Um, uh. I would definitely recommend that you go to a Barnes and Noble or order this from, from Criterion dot com because like this artwork is absolute nonsense. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. it is the most beautiful artwork. It's probably my favorite yeah. like art I own on a on a physical. Um, That's so sick. I have to get a copy. You gotta any hoosers. Um. Extra episode, Amelie Hoferle, Gavin Warren, the kids from Night Swim. Absolute blast with this. This is Gavin's first podcast. Yeah. Um, this was the first time that Amelie and Gavin had spoken, I think, since uh, being on the set for Night Swim. So it was a blast to get them together um, and chat about all things pool related. Any final thoughts before we get to their conversation? It was fun to have some kids come hang out. Like it, it was, they're both so talented. I think they did, you know, they did a great job in the movie and it was just interesting to have like uh, Gavin is, is our youngest guest ever, um, yeah. you know, and, and it's not like we have many, I think Amelie is like 19, Gavin's like 15. Uh, yeah. It was just, it was just interesting. I could feel the youth in the room felt yeah. like a It made us witch. feel really old. <laughs> yeah, I felt so fucking old, felt man. Really old. Um, but, but yeah, it was fun to talk to him. And to, you know, to get to chat with like young creative minds like that uh, active in the industry right now is, is a lot of fun. And 
and yeah, it's a good, good conversation. Yeah. On that note, we will get you guys over to our conversation with Amelie and Gavin. Stick around for our Mostly Horror Rex of the Week. We will catch you on the other side. All right, we are joined today by Amelie Hoferle and Gavin Warren. Uh, Amelie and Gavin play brother and sister Izzy and Elliot Waller in the new Blumhouse film Night Swim out January 5th. Guys, thanks for joining us today. We're really excited to have you. Thank you for having us. This is so fun. Yeah, yeah. we <laughs> listen. I, I do have to say we were just talking with with Gavin off the air about ripsticks and it has me it has me invigorated. It has me energized to have this conversation. Um, so I'm already Feel really excited again. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, so very, very stoked to talk to you guys. And we're going to start this conversation out the way that we do with a lot of our guests. But maybe a little bit different because you both are on you're, you're a bit younger than most people that we have. You know, we talk to a lot of directors and and uh, people like that. And so I'm really curious if you guys could tell me your intros to the horror genre. Obviously, you're in Night Swim, which is a, a spooky film about a pool, a haunted pool. Um, but I'm curious if you could tell me your first memories of you know maybe the first scary movie that you probably shouldn't have saw but you snuck out at night and you were watching it behind the couch or or someone older than you showed you a film that you know maybe your parents wouldn't have wanted uh Freaked you we right can out. start with we can start with amelie do you have any any specifics <sighs> that you can think of so the really like silly thing about me and movies is i used to be terrified of movies so when you say like a scary movie immediately like when i was i think i started watching movies i didn't watch movies for a really long time because they would terrify me i think the first movie i watched not i think this was definitely the first movie i watched was sound of music and it didn't scare me it was good it was safe okay then i went on to like the next movie i think it was what was it, it must have been nemo or wally was like the second movie i watched okay I, I could have shot my pants. That's how much it scared me. <laughs> so any movie was terrifying for me. <laughs> just movies I, in general. <laughs> just movies in general. Yeah, this because... is this is the scariest thing I've ever seen. I can't. Yeah. Like, no, nothing nothing <laughs> scarier than this. Wally. <laughs> it's precious now, and oh my gosh, I love him, Wally. Mwah. But I, it terrified me. I couldn't watch movies for the longest time because anything would scare me because I couldn't keep the reality from what was on the screen. So it just, it not as much scared me, but it took up so much of my brain space. Like I would go to bed that night and I'd be like, oh gosh, like what Wally must have went through. Oh, <laughs> that's terrible. And so, yes, yeah, so I think I, I held off watching scary movies for a really, really long time because even if when I had gotten into movies in general and I loved them, I wouldn't go anywhere near a scary movie because I was like, maybe that's going to bring up that whole disassociation thing that I had as a kid. So huh. the first scary movie that I watched, um, like horror, I think was, and this is awful to, as a beginner, but I think it was like um, it was either Midsummer or Hereditary. That's Whoa. such an intense. <laughs> you're jumping in. Speaking of Night Swim, you're jumping in the deep end right here. Like I was an awful, pool. an awful like dip in the. Oh, there another one. T yeah. Toe dip in the pool. Um, yeah. Bad. One. But I love. I I actually loved them, and I didn't have a hard time. Like, of course, I was freaked out, but I didn't scare the living daylights out of me so got it yeah but yeah then i, I watched hereditary i think i read hereditary first then midsummer and then i got into a bunch of other um horror films but more like in the realm of shining and suspiria the first and suspiria the second and uh the witch stuff like that nice all nice. of these much uh everyone that you've listed sounds in what what a lot of people consider like the art house horror i like that there's no like like straight into the slasher stuff or like weird yeah ways. yeah yeah like more uh straightforward horror you it's, it's all very artistic horror it sounds like for you that's super yeah and i really i really love that so interesting yeah that's kind of wow. where my heart lies there <laughs> Kevin, 
Gavin, what about you? Was it uh, was it Winnie the Pooh or you know? Because we got Finding Nemo and Wally, so I'm really curious. No, I'm, I'm joking. Honestly, I would say the scariest movie I when I was younger was probably The Grinch. Yeah, <laughs> like Jim Carrey. I used to be so scared of him, and honestly, he still is really creepy. Um, <laughs> and I used to watch him in like, yeah, I I don't know, I just. I would have to like close my eyes in some parts because he was just like, he was really creepy to me. And um, yeah, yeah, I just did not like him at all. And um, it was pretty awful. That's um, very... I, would, I would say like my first really, really. Okay, so I started kind of kind of easy. Like I did The Shining, which mm-hmm. didn't really scare me. Um, and then later on, I think probably some of my favorite horror movies is like the conjuring uh Ooh, the first classic. and then this, um uh the nun was pretty good uh yeah they were all just really creepy but honestly yeah the grinch i just could not watch as a kid i would like wake up really late cuz i i would have like dreams about it <laughs> and like sleep for like the next couple days and it was really bad uh like like one time, I had to wake up my mom to like sleep in her room because it was it was pretty bad. bad. I feel that. <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. like an hour. I think whenever I was this younger. Is, this is really <laughs> yeah. topical too. We're recording this just a couple of days before Christmas. I'm sure the Grinch is terrorizing a number of children as we speak. So... It terrorized me today. Like I was listening to the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Jim Carrey is not Jim Carrey in that movie. He's he's yeah. something completely it's... deranged in the best way possible. But I can understand how that would be very creepy. He's, yeah, well, it's very scary. Not gonna it's lie. that uncanny valley thing. They have him in so much makeup. You know, the Who's in general, honestly, almost freak me out more than he does because they just change. Yeah, they change. I so was much thinking about, about that uncanny valley thing because I fell down this hole watching all these videos on it. And that actually scared me more than a lot of things have scared me. Yeah. Gavin, do you know what, what that is? What? The Uncanny Valley. Do you know that? Uh-uh. You, uh, uh, it's, it's a <laughs> now I'm conflicted you can... <laughs> if you should look at it or not. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's just a, a, a principle about like um, things that look human but not quite human. So like animatronics or like weird robots oh. and things like that. Yeah, like when people just don't look fully right or, or like Jim Carrey, he, you know, you can tell there's a human under there, but he has this makeup on that makes him look distorted and strange. Um, you know, yeah. me and me and Steve are, are nineties kids. So a lot of the movies we grew up on were from the eighties and they had a lot of weird puppetry and stuff. And those movies, they're kids movies, but used to freak me out. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people from my, sure. my generation. I feel like Ex Machina does that too. Yes. When I watched Ex Machina, I was super scared, but I was like, it's actually not that scary. Why am I so scared? And then I read about the uncanny Valley thing and I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's good. We should all be afraid of robots because they're gonna, yeah. they're they're gonna take over. And we just need to get ready for it. But yeah. let's uh let's, let's let's jump in while we have you. Let's jump into some night swim stuff. Sean, you wanna you wanna take? Yeah, it absolutely, absolutely. We're um you know night swim is this movie uh, that has come out that's specifically focusing on a scary a scary pool. So you're doing a lot of a lot of shoots in the water. I've spent you know just from the show. We've spent a lot of time looking at behind the scenes. I've seen how complicated uh, these heavy water shoots can be. So I'm just curious, uh, maybe, maybe Gavin, we can start with you. What was it like spending that much time in the water shooting this movie? I imagine you guys just got pruney. I, I don't know if they had all these procedures to, to keep you guys warm. What was the process like for you? Personally, I love the water. Um, <laughs> and I would like go in the corner and like blow bubble rings um, <laughs> and, and just mess around like 90% of the time. Um, but like sometimes it like it was a little bit cold and uh, not the water. The water was really warm and it like felt really nice. But like mm-hmm. whenever you go in and out of the water, it's like it's kind of cold. So it's sometimes it can be a little challenging, but they would give me like warmer. They were really nice about it. They would give me like heat warmers to heat me up and then there was like a warming tent that we would all go in when if like you know because it was pretty cold Mm -hmm. but um in the water was really hot and really nice it was like a warm shower 
<laughs> was it something where you're shooting like entire days just being in the pool or just pool scenes yeah yeah sometimes we have um m most of the day we have uh like pool scenes and like some days we have other scenes and like mm -hmm. we kind of go off and on just... got it it must have, it's a nice break you get to you know be in the pool for a day while you know you yeah. maybe have a stressful shoot somewhere else and then you know the next day you're going into the pool um yeah. Emily what about you is it something where you're like are, are you are you guys fans of swimming like do you are you water people so was it easy to you know be in the in the water for this long I know Gavin for sure is right <laughs> yes yes I definitely am I am too I love the water I love the ocean I love being in the water it's always been something where I felt like very at peace with um however I think like shooting an entire night being in the water is different. Like it's really fun. And then mm -hmm. at some point you're like, oh, okay, it's dark outside and it's 3 a.m. I'd really love <laughs> to just be a little warm. But it was totally, and the crew and the team was super, super sweet about it. We were always made sure that we were kept warm and like had something to eat and to drink. And it was great. I really can't complain. Um, but yeah, I'd be lying if it was like, it's different than, than moving outside, like mm -hmm. in, uh, you know, regular gravity situations, whereas in the water, it's just a different feel and a different, the way you move and everything. Um, but it was cool. I, every time I was in there and I only had like one night where I shot the entire night in the pool. Um, mm -hmm. but especially that night I was like, gosh, this is like a challenge. This is like people, I've always been someone who like wants to run a marathon or wants to like, I really look up to people who do these crazy challenges like these hour-long things i'm like gosh if if i ever want to do something like that i gotta i gotta make sure i can hold out like one night in the pool <laughs> yeah 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 really um, don't realize how tough that sort of thing is until you're like literally thrown into it you know what i mean yeah like, i can't even imagine it's but it was cool own... it was mm -hmm. no i'm sorry go ahead um Oh, what I was saying is if you're in the pool, especially at night when it's dark, that whole um, the scare factor of things really turns up. Like I definitely noticed mm -hmm. that I would get scared by like little, like the tiniest little movements in the water. I was like, gosh, OK, we're not even like this. I don't need to be getting scared right now. I know this is all fine, but why am I actually getting a little spooked? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it's uh, if you know. Uh... By the time this episode comes out, uh, the movie will have only been out for a, a handful of days now. So we're trying not to be too spoilery, but I imagine that the scene that you're talking about is in the movie when everything turns up a lot. Uh, you know, the, the heat really gets going. I would say it's one of the scarier scenes in the movie. And uh, I would imagine it's it's freaky. Uh, some of the stuff that I I saw in that scene was, was pretty intense. Uh, some of the special effects. I, w I won't say much more than that, but some yeah. of the makeup and stuff I was seeing. Uh, so I would imagine it, it's it's easy to freak yourself out of it. Yeah, that's some, um, I would hope people have a lot of courage going into the pool after seeing <laughs> that movie. <laughs> yeah, this is going to listen. We, we talked with, uh, we talked with, with Bryce McGuire, the director a couple days ago. And, yeah. you know, he was obviously talked a lot about Jaws with this, but we, we were saying there's a lot of horror films that have pools in them, but none of them really try to make the pool scary. We're like, that's the whole thing with mm -hmm. this. Like, I think, you know, like you were saying, after after this comes out, you're going to have a lot of people that are like, you know, they're going to think Spooky twice before pool. they, yeah, before they go into that pool, <laughs> before they buy that house with the pool in the backyard. Yeah. It's, it's going to happen. Gosh, we can't even let people enjoy the simple things in life. It's <laughs> yeah. really sad. It's just unfortunate. Got Blame Bryce. Blame Bryce, Emily. Yeah, it's all Bryce's fault. I will. Bryce, yeah. if you're listening, I blame you. <laughs> yes. We'll, we'll send this clip to him. Um, yeah. Another Another question I have for you guys, and this is, you know, this is getting down to the, the nitty gritty of actual acting. Um, you play brother and sister in this film. And, you know, I, I know that acting is, is making these, um, these scenes on paper come to life. But, you know, you're kind of, you're kind of a mean older sister in some points of this film. And Gavin just kind of has to take it. What is it? What is it? <laughs> Gavin's face. What, you know. Is it is it hard to jump on set with someone that you may have just met and you have to treat them like a, a snot nosed little brother? And, and Gavin, is it hard to just take that? Like, you know, it does it does it get to you? I want to know Gavin's that. thoughts first. You, you reacted immediately. So I'd love to know. <laughs> uh, well, it's kind of like me and my brother. Uh, we <laughs> argue a lot, but we're, 
<laughs> we have some parts where we're like really nice to each other, then some parts where we're like just get away from me. Yeah. Um, Do you have to just like you know pretend that you're being mean to each other, and then they say cut, and you guys just laugh about it because it's yeah. So uh, yeah. I think something that really like laid the foundation for for us. I think if it wasn't Gavin, I it may have been harder with someone else, but Gavin and I and met talked for a little bit and then we really got to know each other that that second day we we met when uh we were rehearsing and we were talking about you were talking about something like something from tiktok some like meme and i was not understanding what you were trying to say or like what you were trying to explain to me i can't remember what it was i think it was like the chad face or something i don't know i don't know remember what it was but you look at, and I'm just like looking at you confused and sh like trying to listen and understand what you're saying. And then he just looks at me and he goes, do you know what a meme is? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I know what a meme is. Thanks. <laughs> so I think after that point, we were like, you little dingus. And then it was just, it, it flowed really well. <laughs> That's good. Absolutely. That's good. Have you guys, you guys spent a lot of time obviously shooting the film together. Is this like the first time that you guys have been, you know, together and we'll call it in the same room and the same podcast since you guys are shooting? I think so. Yeah. 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 I'm glad, glad so to bring the family back reunion. together. Again. Yeah. Bring the family yes. back together. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of, speaking of family, you know, um, you, one thing in horror movies that can, that can, make or break it is the family dynamic and and the actual dynamic of the characters uh there's there's so many horror movies that have great scares great monsters but the family maybe isn't believable to me or i don't sympathize with them as much but i think that this movie really kind of nails that your your guys's chemistry not just as siblings but but with your parents you know wyatt russell and, and carrie condon i'm just curious you, you said there were some rehearsals what what was it like building that dynamic and and uh you know, kind of uh, establishing that believability, like how, what was it like working uh, together and and how quick do you feel that chemistry kind of, kind of formed? So Gavin and I really had the chunk of rehearsals together and then we, we barely had any rehearsals with, with Carrie and Wyatt, but okay. I think it was that kind of thing where we were all on set together and the first day, the first scene we shot, uh, we, it was raining and we all had to like huddle under umbrellas and be like close and run from one car to like the next. And that really, I think, gave us a sense of togetherness and um, also like trying to keep the energy up. Like it's raining and we're outside the whole day cracking jokes and like, OK, so where are you from? Where do you live? Kind of just gathering rapport with one another. Um, and it kind of felt like on that first day, it was like, and this sounds so foreign and, or alien, but getting to know your family in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that was a really good way to, to get to know the two of them in the environment of the rain. And yeah, it was, it was wholesome. It was a really sweet way. And I don't know about you, Gavin, but for me, that was a nice way to getting to know them. Yeah, for sure. I am, I am curious, you know, you have, um, Amelie, you obviously were in um, the most recent Hunger Games film. Um, Gavin, you've been in, in a number of things. I, I love First Man. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, but you guys, yes. <laughs> um, but you guys are still, you're, you're young actors. You're in, you're in the beginnings of your career. Um, what are you, what are you learning being on this sort of set with, you know, a big, bigger production you know, these, these established actors as your parents, um, obviously Bryce was, you know, kind of a first time feature director there, but he talked about a lot of things that he learned. Um, is there anything that like kind of jumps out to you as like something that you, you know, really remember from the set that you're going to take to, you know, your next, uh, your next shoot or the way that you make a character next time, anything like that? Coming off of Hunger Games into this, this was a big production, but smaller than Hunger Games, which was nice because it was, we really felt like, a family because I knew everyone's faces and I knew everyone almost or a lot of people like mm -hmm. mostly without in our group by name we would talk every day and it was a very sweet sweet crew um and I think I really learned because I was on the set like every day all day the mm -hmm. importance of 
knowing when to draw back and to take time for myself to get back in touch after, you know, lunch or after a break, get back in touch with my character because it wasn't um, the type of set where everyone was, you know, kind of st- not everyone was staying in their corner and being focused on, you know, themselves. It was very much a everyone was kind of hanging out with everyone. Mm. So knowing the importance of, you know, when to step back and, um, you know, focus a bit on yourself so that you can give the best in the next round of, of scenes, um, was a big thing for me. And, um, yeah, also leaning on your, on your, uh, on your coworkers is a really huge thing that I learned. Like I have a lot of respect and a lot of admiration for the people I worked with and how much just of me being in conversation with them, how much I learned from them and, um, their individual journeys within acting and also in their individual lives is really impactful for me, um, not only with acting, but for my own like life in general. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, gathering those individual connections on a set was really beautiful for me. I love that. No, that, that yeah. definitely that definitely is what I would imagine, you know, going into because like you said, you know, even though it's it's a uh, it's Blumhouse, it's you know, Universal, you still, you still have, you know, a smaller team, because it's a it's a smaller, you know, horror film, it's not a big Hunger Games kind of production. So um, it's great to have those sort of connections. Um, Gavin, anything jump out to you? Yeah, so um, I, I like to watch other people act and like kind of learn from them and see how they kind of take the their role and learn how to act yeah. more act act differently sure, picking act. up on little pieces and stuff yeah 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 and um yeah um like Amelie was saying they all are really I'm, I'm really close to like all of them they're, they're I had really good connections with like a lot of them and mm. um they were really fun to talk to and we would always like off off camera we would always like crack jokes with each other we would always hang out and it, it was very fun you know, and, and Bryce too, he was, he was really awesome. Like we would, we, uh, you know, I think even, even there's a time offset where Amelie and me and, uh, Bryce and I were, were like doing like a push up challenge <laughs> and then we, who won? <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> so there was, uh, a time where we have we would all like dance there's um there are all kinds of like things offset that would you know make everyone together come closer if that sure, makes yeah. sense um i love that so, yeah. that's good i'm sure that's that's something that you you only get on those smaller sets you know what i mean i think if it's something that's way way bigger you don't you don't have that sort of connection um so that's great i i'd love to hear that it's funny i'm uh my friends have me in a month long push up challenge right now, so everything is sore all the time, and I'm just hurting. So it's really funny. Yeah, JT this is the has first time. This is the first time I'm hearing of this guy. Yeah, I don't it's, believe it's, that Sean is in a month long push up challenge. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you. I'll send you the proof. Amelie I Gavin, have the car facts after this, this, this side know. side thing. Uh, <laughs> but either way, sorry, pain. Um, but but yeah, I, I just wanted to bring up. Uh, you know, obviously on the show, we we watch a lot of horror movies. Um, I always get really excited when I see new faces coming to the genre, uh, you know, especially on the younger side, because some of my favorite horror movies are when when kids and younger people have to face these really intense situations. Um, you guys talked a little bit about your intros to the genre. I'm just curious, is do you see horror as a genre that you plan on exploring more in the future? Um, have a lot of fun with it. Uh, do you have any like dream projects or anything? Uh, any directions you want to go? Yeah. Um... I'm really into uh, like drama and horror movies. They're both like uh, probably what I'm best at. I just really, I don't know. It's it's just really cool and I love doing them because mm-hmm. it's really interesting to see like the behind the scenes, like like including in scary movies, like how, how they do that stuff and like uh, how they do special effects and how they um, – you know, do like blood and like all that kind of stuff. It's really cool to see like actually in person and how, like how 
like if you see it in the movie you'll be like oh i know how they did that like that special yeah. effect you know you know what i mean it, it's really cool um does it make it less scary for you? Like you, you kind of can't, you know, is it, is it easier to watch that sort of stuff? Cause you're like, Oh, that's just a, that's just the prop person doing X, Y, and yeah, Z. Or, right. if, if I'm watching a movie, I'll be like, I'll, 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 sometimes I'll know how they do it. And it's, and it makes it not as scary other like than someone who's watching it and doesn't know how any of it sure. works. Um, but no, I still get scared, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Emily, what about you? Is is horror something that you uh you enjoy performing in? Yeah, I enjoyed it, and I would really love to to venture down the path of doing more. Uh, I would say, yeah, more mm. psychological uh things. I really, really loved uh, Bones and All yeah. that came out this year. Um, so I I would love to see myself in a, in a role like that in the future. I think that's really interesting, meshing this very real life into yeah also the horrors of real life um of course cannibalism <laughs> isn't something that's some places, uh, necessarily some places it's real life i would hope some not <laughs> some place i actually recently listened to a podcast um about oh gosh what's it called it's uh search engine search i think engine. is what the podcast is called um and they were talking about um this is called completely side note. They were talking about why people don't eat people. Like, cause this kid at the dinner table, he's like three years old, four years old was asking his dad, um, or like his dad asked him, what do you want for dinner? And he was like, jokingly saying like, Oh yeah, I want like a human brain. <laughs> ha ha ha. And, um, then his dad was like, no, we don't do that. And the kid was like, well, why don't we do that? And the dad didn't have like a necessarily good answer for it just because it was, it's such a taboo. Like, why do we not do it? Of course, I understand. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Emily? <laughs> this yeah, is not me <laughs> coming out that we don't. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm yeah. just saying it's interesting. It. <laughs> so like, the, the, I guess the taboos of life, the biggest taboos are the ones that we don't even acknowledge as taboos um that's i think it's a really interesting thing to go down like and how that fits into real life those psychological thrillers i would yeah, guess yeah, really like, interest me I totally and please don't think no, no. that i want to <laughs> eat this is it's not <laughs> i already yeah. see this going yeah, we, badly we make all the social media clips <laughs> yeah we're, we're gonna say idea. amelie amelie the cannibal that's what the name of the episode is yeah. gonna be um <laughs> Yay. So I do, you know, obviously we talked about going into other, other genres or staying in the horror genre in the future. I do want to ask, and this doesn't need to be horror, going forward in your careers, if you could look at a crystal ball and choose one character that you would like to portray in a film, could be anything, could be a superhero, could be a character from a book, a world is a remake. We're living in the age of remakes. Yes, a lot of remakes yeah. happening. If you guys could play any character, who would it be? Whoever whoever wants to take that first. This is this is a thinker. I know this isn't Tough. A, an easy one, but I'm I'm curious if anything jumps out. Oh, I know. I can't remember her name right now. Give us give but us context and we'll we'll see if we can remember. Sylvia Plath the Bell Jar. <laughs> Wait. Very, very uh what, very what deep the, cut kind of pull or or unexpected uh pull. Unexpected, there. but it's uh Every, I I would, not every, but I would think a lot of women have read that book and it's left a big impact on them. A lot of people, I don't want to generalize it to women, but that book, oof, I know it's tough. I know it's a hard one, but just to, I would love to, to get the chance to, to portray that because it's not at all who I don't see myself in her. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But it's something that interests me so much that I would love embodying, even if it's just for those couple months, um, researching her and diving into that character. Interesting. Sure. I don't think it's, I can. I, have, I can't put my finger on a Bell Jar film adaptation. Yeah, it, as far as I'm, I going. have a a collection of of her poems and stuff, but I haven't read the Bell Jar specifically. Uh, Esther, Esther Greenwood is, is the name uh, that we're looking for, I think, here. Yes. Thank okay. you. I'll have to read it. I'll have to look into it. I gotta say, I wasn't expecting that, Amelie. Thank you for yeah. the, <laughs> thank you for catching us off guard. Gavin, do you have, uh, have any characters that you would like to uh, you'd like to play down the road? 
Yeah. So of course, whenever I'm older, you know, you know, not right now, but I'd like to be <laughs> um, gladiator. Yes, gladiator. Uh, okay. Gladiator, Braveheart, like the main guys. That'd be pretty cool. Um, I love it. Riding into really battle. Leaders. Yeah, yeah. I love you know I love old war movies like sword fights and like gun fights. It's really cool. Um, I haven't been in many of them, so I don't really know a lot about how they work. Mm-hmm. But I think it would be. I think it'd be pretty awesome. Uh, I like it. I- I half expected you to say that, you know, the next time they remake The Grinch when you're older, you you take over and... <laughs> I was expecting that, too. <laughs> that, I, that would have been a great answer, actually. Put, put Jim Carrey to yeah. shame. No, Gladiator's sick. I, no, that's I, great. I, and there's there's going to be a new Gladiator coming out, I think, you know, as we're recording this, next year. And so maybe when they do the sequel to that, we'll have, you know, Gavin will be, will be a part yeah. of it. I didn't know that. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's coming. Jeremy. It's <laughs> hire me please <laughs> yeah. you, you heard it here first producers um well listen amelie gavin it's been an absolute blast chatting with you guys uh to all of our listeners we've we've said this at the beginning of the episode but night swim uh is out january 5th check it out in theaters now uh guys thank you so much again for being on the show we really appreciate the time All right, we are back. Thank you guys for listening to our conversation with Amelie and Gavin. And thanks to Amelie and Gavin for carving some time out from their days to chat with us about Night Swim. Um, Really enjoyed having them on. It is, yet again, time for our mostly horror recommendations of the week. I went in our non-extra episode uh, first, so Sean, you get to go first. I have been watching so much shit lately. <laughs> um, just trying to catch up on some stuff uh, that that I, you know, that we didn't really talk about. Stuff from even from the, the year that yeah. I didn't get to see before we did our, uh, you know, our Spookum Scarum Awards, which is not mm-hmm. entirely fair. Um, though I don't think I would have changed anything even after what I've seen. But I'm going to do a twofer. Um, okay. I'm going to do, do a little bit of a twofer. First off, I saw, what's it called? Night of the Hunter. Night of the Hunted. Um, hunted. yep night of the hunted on shutter uh mm-hmm. this movie was there are, uh, i'm recommending it because it there are a lot of things that i love in it i do not think it's perfect and there's certainly things that don't work it kind of gets um like monologue in ways that like in in an in an attempt to make a political statement they just kind of have these weird long things that they say i think for okay. one character it makes sense but then for another character it doesn't fit as well but overall it like visually what they do is pretty cool the the general premise of the movie is a woman ends up trapped inside of a gas station with a sniper like outside terrorizing her um and interesting. yeah it is it's super interesting and i'm going to leave it there and just say that it's on shutter and you guys should give it a watch uh not movie of the year or anything but but definitely interesting Worth um watch. yeah and then the second wreck is i finally watched i think i'm saying it right sisu yeah sisu did you see it no i want to no know. all i'm gonna say is if you are frustrated with some members of our country some some ideologies some groups and you might get a cathartic experience out of watching someone just fuck up a bunch of nazis watch sisu uh again not a perfect movie but uh (laughs) but (laughs) i'm telling you if if watching nazis just get absolute just get their asses handed to them could bring you any joy then you should throw this movie on. So oh. it's a tight one, a tight hour 30, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good time. I'm, I'm going to watch, I, I've been wanting to watch CC for some time. Um, Cause I know it's made by like the John wick producers and is it and made? That okay. Stuff. That make I, yeah. it feels like John wick only fuck Nazis and it's super <laughs> <laughs> and like down, <laughs> like so down. That's funny. Um, um, yeah, I definitely have wanted to check that out. So those are two, that's a good, mostly horror, uh, you know, range yeah. there. Yeah. Um, great. Well, I'm going to stick with the Nazis for my rec today. Um, this is not a feel good movie, 
Um, but I saw a film called The Zone of Interest. Um, Zone of Interest. It's a movie that I've wanted to see for some time. I'm pretty sure it won the, the Palme d'Or at Cannes. Um, it is a film by Jonathan Glazer, who did a movie called Under the Skin with um, Scarlett Johansson, um, okay. which I personally was not a fan of. Um, and so the zone of interest basically follows, um, the commandant of Auschwitz and his family on their daily life. Uh, they live right outside of Auschwitz. You never see inside of Auschwitz. Um, you see things, you hear things. Um, but basically the film makes you a passive participant in their lives as they enjoy the things that are stolen from people at Auschwitz or talk about what they're going to do on vacation or things of that nature. Um, it got to a point where I was just, you, I, I, had almost forgotten about what his job was and what they do. And then there's a moment uh, in the last 10 minutes that snaps you back to reality. And um, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Wow. And okay. it is, it is a, it, it's a slow burn. It's, it's really, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not long. It's like a, an hour 40 probably. Um, sure. But it is one of the best, like, kind of subtle commentaries on on uh just passive passively um watching things bad things happen sure um, in the world so whoa i'm it, sold it's it's really good um i don't foreign think film? i'll ever watch it again okay what'd you say is it foreign film is it um uh yeah yeah i mean it's yeah. all it's all in uh, polish or whatever or german oh, yeah right. the, okay. poland is where um auschwitz is but yeah um but yeah so uh, again, I I don't think I'll watch it again. It made me feel like garbage afterwards, which is I think the you know the intent. Sure. Um, but I thought it was really well done. And again, I it's very similar to Under the Skin. He he shoots things a very specific way. So if you've seen Under the Skin and you enjoy it, like you'll you know Jonathan Glazer's films just look like that. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I want to recommend it because I think it's a really important film. Um, but again, not a movie that I'll be like. Sure. clamoring to if you're to looking again. to feel like shit this weekend throw yeah. on a flick and again it's gotcha. it's really important so i i definitely want to recommend that people watch it but um yeah be, it was be like a, we went to go eat like tacombi afterwards and i was like this just doesn't feel right so Fair. yeah it's just one of those one of those things so that's my that's okay. my wreck of the week um and i know i talked about it before the before we went to the interview but if you haven't watched pinocchio it's on netflix I also I just bought the physical. It's so good. So that'll be my my pick me up is go watch Pinocchio. Fair. Um, a fair double feature. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pinocchio and Zone of Interest. It's, yeah. it's a perfect one. Um, Amazing. Anywho, those are my recs. Um, as always, let us know what you think about our recommendations. Give us your own recommendations. Tell us what you thought about Night Swim. Send us an email, mostly horror movie night at gmail.com. You can follow us on Instagram at mostly horror pod, TikTok. Twitter, aka X at mostly horror. I'm on all the socials at Steven is average. Sean's everywhere at hypocrite inc or hypocrite.inc. And that is all we got for you this week. We will catch you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>